a September day in 1903 in a small room of a small red brick building, three men made an important decision. Whoa. Whereas two successive grand juries have recommended the erection of a new courthouse, and whereas the said reports have been approved by the court, be it resolved that we, the county commissioners of Somerset County, Pennsylvania, proceed to erect a new courthouse. Unquote. The motion carried by unanimous vote. The red brick building in which the commissioners sat had served the county since 1854. During the early days of the century, the development of the county's coal resources, the construction of railroads, and entire towns led to unprecedented growth. A 48% increase in the county's population between 1900 and 1910 strained the capacity of the courtroom, row offices, and vaults. In spite of public protest, the daring board of commissioners proceeded to erect a building, which remained a functional and beautiful testimony to the pride and craftsmanship of county residents. Somerset County Courthouse, the Epic. Three courthouses completed in the years 1801, 1853, and 1907 have stood in this elevated site deeded to Somerset County by Adam Schneider in 1795. Adam Schneider was the developer and primary landowner of Brunertown, the small town later renamed Somerset. The present courthouse was constructed in 1904 to 1906 by the firm of Caldwell and Drake of Columbus, Indiana, who submitted a successful construction bid of $247,444. They followed construction plans by the architect J.C. Fulton from Uniontown, Pennsylvania. Following it in the skyline of the borough of Somerset, the exemplary structure stands at an altitude of 2,190 feet above sea level, highest of any courthouse in Pennsylvania. In a town twice scarred by disastrous fires in 1833 and 1872, it was critical that the new courthouse be built of fireproof materials. The plan by selected by the commissioner specified Indiana limestone on a foundation of native sandstone. The huge blocks of limestone were quarried in Bedford, Indiana, shipped to Somerset by train, dragged to the construction site by horses, and set in place with no further alteration. The, line, the sandstone was quarreled locally. We are now going to enter the main doors of the courthouse. Follow me. Up the courthouse grand stairway, rising from three directions here, here, and here. The marble stairs lead to a central landing beneath the newly refurbished stained glass rotunda here. The bright golden green display of false stone form the base of the two copper domes on the outside of the courthouse. The long stair railing rests on bronze cast steel balusters. Much of the interior of the courthouse is gorgeous in Italian marble. Notice the beauty of the architecture that makes this courthouse one of the time. We are now going to enter the courtrooms of the courthouse. All rise. The Honorable Judge Pradeep Nair presides. We are now at one of the two beautifully constructed courtrooms. This courtroom is specifically called courtroom number two. Notice the bench that I'm sitting at. It is flanked by an ornate panel bearing the names of the county's first judges. Of the most notable were Jeremiah S. Black, who served from 1842 until 1853. Also, he served as Chief Justice of the State Supreme Court and Secretary of State 
now entered courtroom number one. Courtroom number one is much larger than courtroom number two. As you look around, you can see the various number of benches, which held many people for trials ranging from moonshining charges to murder, as well as church services, temperance and women's suffrage rallies, public hearings, and even KKK meetings. Follow me down the aisle, and I'll show you the various aspects of this courtroom. On my left and on my right is where the prosecutors and defendants sit. And on my far left is where the jury sits to listen to the case read. And now follow me to the witness stand. This is where the County Commissioner's Office. The county's chief governing body is the board of three commissioners elected to serve four-year terms. They are Mr. Robert J. Will, Mr. Brad Coburn, and Mr. David L. McNamara. Duties of the commissioners include responsibility for voter registration, elections, assessment of persons and property, care of dependents, veteran services, fiscal management, and appointment of county personnel. As fiscal managers, the commissioners adopt the county budget, levy taxes, assess property, and they borrow funds for construction projects. As members of the salary board, the commissioners participate in setting the salaries of county employees and determining the number of employees who would be hired. Other responsibilities of the office include maintenance of county property such as the courthouse, jail, county nursing home, airport and office buildings, service on the advisory board, many county agencies, and allocation of county liquid fuel funds to boroughs and townships for road and street improvements. The commissioners investigate the need of libraries and civic organizations and dispense county funds accordingly. This is the recorder's office. The elected recorder of deeds, Patricia A. Brandt, is responsible for the preservation of records relating to real property. More than 50 types of documents are recorded in this office including deeds, mortgages, easement agreements, powers of attorney, military discharges, property options, oaths of office, charters of nonprofit organizations, leases, highway and subdivision plans, mind maps, and agreements of sale. Each year, approximately 12,000 new documents are recorded at this office. This is the Register of Wills and Clerk of Wards and Courts Office. This elected official, Mrs. Linda Jo Berkey, has the dual role of maintaining records on wills, estates, inherited taxes, licenses, and miscellaneous records, and also proceedings related to adoptions and estates of incompetent persons. Applications for marriage licenses are issued at this office. Genealogical records dating back to 1792 are at this office. This is a clerk of criminal court's office. The elected clerk, Mary K. Denny, is the chief record keeper of the criminal court. This official is responsible for maintaining the minute book and record of all court proceedings, filing all papers in accordance with criminal and court procedures, and distribution of court-related costs. This is a prothonotary's office. The prothonotary Mrs. Sandy Miller Hampton is the elected clerk of the Court of Common Pleas and is responsible for recording all civil procedures before the court. This official signs all written and processes, such as suits. Other duties of the office include taking bail in civil actions, entering judgments at the instance of plaintiffs, recording divorce proceedings, administering oaths and affirmations, and maintaining the judgment documents. Upon the confession of defendants, the prothonotary signs all judgments and takes the acknowledgments and satisfaction of judgments or decrees entered on the 
the record of the court. This official is also responsible for maintaining the minutes book for the court of common police trial and argument days, receiving petitions in connection with roads and right of way, recording eminent domain proceedings, and the action of boards of view. Passports are issued by this office also. This is the district attorney's office. The county elected district attorney, David J. Flower, conducts and court all criminal prosecution in the name of the Commonwealth. This official is the chief law enforcement officer for the county in which he is elected. Also, there is a law library here. The books are for the court, the county officials, and members of the county bar association. A law librarian is appointed by the courts. This is the county treasurer's office. The elected county treasurer, Mrs. Donna Matko Schmidt, receives and distributes all county funds, pays bills in order from the commissioners, and produces records of all transactions for use by the auditors at the end of each month throughout the year. As an agent of the state, the county treasurer issues dog, hunting, and fishing licenses, boat registration, and sportsman's permits. This is the office of the Emergency Management Agency. The agency provides educational training for the public and special interest groups for prevention of and preparedness for natural and man-made disasters, maintains emergency operation plans for response when local capabilities are exhausted, and assists in recovery procedures when required. This is the auditor's office. Three elected auditors, Mrs. Patricia S. Flatt, Mrs. Shirley D. Wolf, and Mr. David L. Fox, are responsible for the periodic review of county fiscal affairs. A general fiscal report is prepared and published by the auditors each year. This is a court administrator's office. This appointed official is responsible for scheduling and supervising the conduct of courts. This is also the jury commissioner's office. The jury commissioner's elected officials, representing both political parties, are responsible for the selection of jurors from the county tax roll. The red and blue buttons are a jury lotto in which the jury members are selected. This is the county control office. As you can see, there's only authorized personnel. I can tell you that when we're in there, we aren't allowed to take a camera in there because of some things that can't be said on videotape that could be harmful to a witness or something like that, so we can't go in. The Somerset County Control was founded as a police dispatch center in 1972. It was later expanded to dispatch police, fire, and emergency medical services for the public safety agencies in Somerset County. The communications center is operated 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Also, in 1992, they expanded this into the county's 911 service. Steve, come up here. It's really awesome. You can see everything from up here. That's right, Robert. We can see everything from up here. That's because we're on the highest level of the courthouse. Well, that the people can and get up to. From this point, you can see all of Somerset, north, west, east, and south. Straight ahead, what you're seeing right now is where McDonald's is, Wendy's, all the hotel, motels, hotels. And, and there's the awesome Georgian Place Mall, where we all love to shop for our great values, shopping in a classic manner, the Georgian Mall. And there's our turnpike. You can see the trucks going by. I don't know if you can see it or not, because that clearly, because of the snow, snowing rather heavily up here. And we are risking our lives, basically. If you look down at the ground, you can see lots of snow. It's icy, too. Very icy. And we are going to take a trip around the upper level, so you can see all aspects of Somerset. And if you follow me right over here, you can see our post office. Yes, our post office is right there. And who knows, maybe one of you guys can see your house over there. And, and over there is our Mecca, the Somerset Area High School. We travel every day of the week to work and learn. That's right. And now we will see a place that my father works at, and Aditi's father and Posey's father. Somerset Hospital Center for Health.
if you you look people they say that this area on a clear night is very beautiful on like a summer night it's but right now as for now we can't say that although it is snowing it's very nice when it's in winter too all the snow except it's that rather dangerous for us up here like we said before so we'll make this trip as carefully as possible. Through the deep blue sea, you can see the ice. Very icy. Right there, you can see the ice. Beautiful ice. And Good for ice skating and hockey. Oh my God, he fell! Oh my God. Get up, get up. Are you okay? Oh, sorry, things, sorry. The things we'll do for A's, Mr. Moisey. My gosh. We're basically risking our lives up here. You could have uh, so, broken a leg. Sh shut up, Mary. Anyways, what I was saying before. Before that accident happened, we are going to go around. We have just made one circle of the courthouse. I mean, the upper level of the courthouse. And you can see, if you see right in there, you can see the upper part of the dome. The part of the dome that we were talking about before. We will be entering that part of the do section of the dome right now. Kids, do not try this at home. It's very dangerous. I hope I can make this up safely. He's climbing the ladder. He's opening the door. Now, class, you follow me. By the way, we weren't supposed to be doing this. We were doing it anyways. We pulled some strings to do this just for our class. And you can see this part of the section of the dome, that is, this has been here ever since the courthouse was built. It's been refurbished a couple times, but still maintains its beauty. And Robert better be very careful because if he falls, the camera's broken and my parents will freak out. Yeah, all he cares about material things. He doesn't care about life. No, Robert, I don't care about that. Anyways, how about you climb up that ladder, Robert? Let's see. I don't think so. It doesn't look very sturdy. I don't think it'll hold me. Let's see if you want to do it. You want me to do it, class? Marie, I hope you're enjoying this. I hope you're not sarcastically laughing or mocking us. That concludes our little visit to the top of the courthouse. Now we will meet you back downstairs where it is warm. I hope you've enjoyed this. I know I have. This is the courthouse's other law library. As you can see, there are thousands of books that can be used by the county's judges, officials, and members of the county bar association. These shelves of books stretch all the way around the premise of this floor. Many of the thousands of books for use for reference by the people. As you come this way, can see the pendulum to the courthouse clock, but you may also notice that it's not running. In 1986, they installed a motor that automatically wound the clock, which made the pendulum obsolete, but it is still here. We will see the courthouse clock later. If we look down this way, we can see a better view of the whole courthouse. We can see how beautiful the architecture is. You can also see all the books on this floor that stretch around this way. This is the courthouse clock. This clock was designed especially for this location by the Howard Clock Company of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. It was not part of the original plan for the structure, but it was added after a local minister raised $1,801.37 in contributions local residents. Until 1941, the clock blades were rewound manually twice each week, often by county jail inmates, such as Craig right here. Since that time, the motor has wound the clock automatically. The bell which tolls the hour was taken from the second county courthouse, which we will see right now. This is the bell of the courthouse clock. It was cast in 1856, it was brought here, and it's been here ever since. We would videotape it when it was ringing, but no, because it's so loud, we don't go deaf. 
So it just improvise right now with the small ring. Imagine that at ten times as many decibels. That's loud. been our presentation, and we hope you've enjoyed it. See, when we showed you the bell segment, we thought we left you empty-handed because, see, you didn't get to experience the true ringing of the bell. So here we are again at the bell. And since we don't want to go deaf standing right by the bell, we've left it all for you. Seven rings just for you guys. See you later. See ya. Thank you.